So let's go ahead and do another exercise here. This is an exercise that I've done in a lot of classes because it integrates a lot of uh, uh, string manipulation, loops, and file I.O. And it also teaches you a little bit about security and how passwords work. So generally, pa in, at least in a good system, passwords are stored uh, using a cryptographic hash function. In other words, if I have a password 1234, 1234 is not stored on the system. Instead, it goes through a hash and whatever that hash produces, that's what's stored in the system. So that when I want to come back in and I provide my password 1234, uh, it doesn't look up 1234 to see if that's right. It hashes it and sees if that, that pa hash password is, is, uh, is correct. And the reason that this is secure is that it's a one way. You, if, if somebody breaks in and steals the hashes, uh, they, can't, they can't reverse it and get your password back. But they can do what's called a dictionary attack. In other words, they can start guessing the passwords, uh, say 1234, one, uh, 1234, 1235, 1236, right? uh, and uh, just try every single combination until they get a hash that matches this one over here. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of people use dictionary words as their hashed passwords. So one way that you can attack passwords is through a dictionary attack. In other words, you can pull up a, a common dictionary and run through every single possibility and see if that matches the hash that you stole from, from the system. Uh, for example, if I pa ha the most common password is, is password. Uh, and if I use the cryptographic hash function called SHA-256, then it would produce this very, very long hash here. Uh, now in practice, uh, uh, SHA-256 is pretty good, but in practice you would actually want to use something like script, bcrypt, or uh, pbkdf2, which is uh, a password-based key derivation function. In other words, you, you don't want to just do a plain old hash. Uh, you want to protect yourself against these kind of things, against this dictionary attack, or, or sometimes they're called rainbow attacks, uh, where somebody has pre-computed a bunch of common passwords uh, so that they could just look it up once they've stolen the hashes. We'll keep it simple though, and we'll use a SHA-256 hash password. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look up uh, all the words in a dictionary. In other words, we're going to do file I.O. We're going to process a file line by line. Uh, and we're going to see, uh, we're going to try to crack this password right here. Uh, so given this, ha this, this is all hex. Uh, so given this password right here, let's go through and see what dictionary word was used to create this password right here. All right. All right. So as my first step here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write some code to process a dictionary file. So the dictionary file stored on my computer right here is in user shared dict password uh, words, uh, and it's got. Two hundred and thirty-five thousand uh, words. Some very uncommon words. Some more common words. It's it's not a complete dictionary, uh, but it's pretty. It's good enough for our purposes here. Right. So I'm going to want to create a file and open it up and then read it line by line uh, using a scanner. Remember that I'm going to have to surround that with a try catch. and I'll open up the dictionary file in that location that I, I just showed you. And remember, this is a checked exception, meaning that I have to surround this with a try catch. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw a, a catch and release. I'll throw a new runtime exception. Uh, that file definitely exists and we do have permission to look at it, so this should work. Uh, and now I'm going to want to process that file line by line. So while the scanner that I'm working with has another line, go ahead and get that line. And for now, let me go ahead and print it out. So it looks like it got every single one of those words and printed them out. Uh, note here that when I'm printing it out, I'm printing it out with another endline character, meaning that the scanner actually took out the original endline character for me. 
Uh, and then I was restoring, like if I just add print instead, it would print one big giant, one big really long line here. All right. Instead of printing this, I want to compute the hash to see if it matches the hash that I'm looking for. And the hash that I'm looking for looks like this. All right, there's the hash that I want to break. I want to find the dictionary word associated with this hash. Now, uh, just plain old Java does not provide much uh, in the way of uh, security utilities, or at least they're not very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in, I'm going to use this opportunity to show you how to pull in an external library, something that's not standard in Java. Uh, and the one that I like best is Bouncy Castle. Uh, so, I've got this as part of a download. I, I went to bouncycastle.com uh, or whatever it is, and I downloaded their jar file. And when you've got a library of stuff, uh, when you've got a library of functionality and classes and, and, and code uh, for Java, they put it in a jar file. Jar stands for Java Archive File. And so uh, if I pull this into my project here, I'll get all the functionality that they built, uh, cryptographic hash functions and, and encryption algorithms and stuff like that that they've developed. The way that you usually do this in a project is, at least one way of doing this, is to create a folder that I'll call lib, short for library file. Uh, and then I will simply drag and drop this external jar file over here. Right. And you see now it's been copied. I will go ahead and build, uh, add this to my build path so that it's a referenced library now. Now, uh, there are other ways of doing this, and in practice, it's probably better to use a, a dependency management system or a build system uh, like Maven, usually show in class, but I'll go ahead and omit it for this video. Uh, but that's the usual way of doing it, all right? Uh, basically, a, a dependency management system like, uh, like Maven uh, allows you not to have to download manually, uh, manually download files and put them in. Instead, Maven goes out and gets the latest version and all of its dependencies. So if there were a dependency on a bouncy castle, like it needed another library, it would automatically bring that in as well. Right? So uh, very nice to use in practice. So what I'm going to do is now that I've got that, that word here, I'll, I'll call it word instead, uh, I'll go ahead and create a hash of it. Right? Uh, now to do that, I've uh, I went ahead and made a uh, hash utils here. You can give it an, uh, an input string and it'll return an output string. Right. So hash utils dot SHA two fifty six hash of the word. I'll go ahead and call this H instead. Uh, let me go ahead and print these out. Word uh, word hashes to hash. Just to see what, what it looks like. Right? And a lot of them here. Uh, let's see if it's working just by verifying that we get the same hash value as, uh, as the, the password. So instead of printing them all out, if word.equals password, then I'll print it out. And you can verify if you want to go back that this is indeed the hash value uh, that I printed on the slide earlier. Uh, that the password, if you just use password as your password, then this is the hash that you get, right? And unfortunately that is extremely common. Uh, so I don't want to check for just password. What I want to do is I want to check, does the hash equal, this hash right here, does that equal H, the hash password for that? And if so, then I will print out this, uh, that I've cracked the password. Which will be word, the word from the dictionary. Right? So let's see if we can actually crack this password now. Oh, looks like the password was computer. So really nice application here of a basic file IO using a scanner, just going line by line. Uh, processing it, bringing in an external library, uh, looking at string utility, uh, string comparisons here. Uh, equals is one way of doing it. Another way that I showed you before would be compare to. If that is equal to zero, then you've cracked your password, right? Because hash and h have the same value. 
Also, remember that if you've got a checked exception, go ahead and catch and release by re-throwing it as an unchecked exception, uh, for, uh, in this case as a runtime exception.